Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. Now, last night I showed you part one of my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with UK basketball coach John Calipari. We picked it up tonight with John Calipari's views on the future of college basketball. Let me ask you about college basketball in general. I, I see 2022 is the sort of talk as to when they may get rid of the one-and-done rule. And as somebody who loves college... I'm not certain they will. You're not certain? No. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that. But I... I and I'm reading tea leaves. How do I read tea leaves? Pretty good? You do pretty good. Well, why don't okay. you think that's going to happen? I see the movement toward the G League as maybe the solution for them, and that's why they're doing it so early. They want to see, mm -hmm. does this work, and do we not need kids out of high school? We'll take them out of the G League. If the NBA were to create a G League, they're paying $125,000 now. I don't think many kids are going to take that. But let's say that they were to allow teams to draft guys but store them there for a year. Do you think a You mean out of high school? Out of high school. Do you think there's a That's scenario? That's two years away, and, and I'm telling you right now, the issue is how do we deal with this G League? You said it, you didn't think it would affect Kentucky. It won't affect Kentucky. Will it affect college basketball? Uh, not the way they have it right now. They're talking five guys. Okay. Four guys, five guys, six guys. No effect. If they ever went to 30 guys, yes, it would affect all of college basketball. Uh, when do they decide to let us know who they're letting in that pool? Final four? Well, there may be 20 kids that have nowhere to go now. Yeah. How, why would you do it then? Why don't you do it early? Um, there's a lot of things they have to work out. What I do like, and you know I did an interview, because, and again, so everybody knows, I, don't, I didn't know anything. But I had a flight from Seattle to here, four hours. And if you get me on an airplane for four hours and I don't have something to do and I'm not <laughs> sleeping, I'm thinking. Yeah. And that's when I came up. The next day, ESPN came in to do an article. That was the D-League, G-League, my thoughts on it, which are, if you're going to take these kids, eight semesters of education paid for. So if they don't make it, they can go back that we as universities, if a kid stays one or two years and wants to come back, make them sit out a year and then play. The NBA's paying for it. You know, if we want to add a scholarship or two to every team, it doesn't matter. They're paying for it through the NBA. My problem with it all is devaluing education. Are you worried that like 13 and 14 year olds will say, I'm going to the G League, I'm going to the NBA, I don't yes. need to study. Is that's, that your worry? That's my worry. Um, now you got ninth and 10th graders and their families. Why are kids working so hard in diets and training as eighth, ninth graders, 10th? Because them and their families see what's at the end of the road. Michael Jordan made a million a year. <laughs> Carl Towns is going to make 30 million a year. So is Anthony. So is John. I mean, I can go on. 30 million a year. I didn't say 30 million. <laughs> I said a year. Michael made 1 million a year. Why would we devalue education? I say this to everyone that wants to hear. The NCAA had the highest graduation rate of college basketball players in the history of our sport last year. Are we going to go and just, for society, don't worry about academics? It also seems like they're trying, I've always thought that it's almost a solution looking for a problem. I mean, it's a handful of guys. Like that you're talking about, why do you want to blow up Because an Kentucky's sport? benefiting by this, and how do we slow them down? And I say it doesn't matter. We're going to eat first whatever rules. Make the rules for the kids. Like if they said a signing bonus for a high school player, a million dollars, half a million, pay them 125000 for a year, let them get a shoe contract, guarantee them eight semesters of college education, because if he doesn't make it, let him come back to college, and then we take him back. I'm for that. Really tough on us. How do we recruit the G? I mean, it makes it hard. It ain't about us. It's about these kids. If we made decisions based on the kids, you're not making mistakes. These decisions were made politically. How do we make this look right? All right, I'll give you this one. You ready? It's you and you say, I'm going, because you would. No, you I would from, go, yes. Yeah, for 125000 <laughs> you would go. All right, so now you get a little shoe deal and you get another two hundred, and you're so happy, and you walk into that G League team and everybody's making 35000 but you. But they're 23, 24, 25. You're 17, 18. What are they doing to you? Well, they're going to try to beat you consistently. To death. Yeah. 
to death to prove who do you think you are, rookie? And now, Mom, I didn't know it would be this bad. These guys don't like me. Everybody always, I was the prom king. I was this. They hate me. What am I going to do? Okay, so now the kid doesn't make it. We just say, forget it. It was his choice. Really? What if that were your child? What if that were your child and you helped him make the mistake? You're talking about a demographic. Who is the... Who is around him to help him make the right decisions? I'll, I'll say this. You come here, you have a lifetime scholarship. You're fine here. What are we going to do when they don't make it? How are we going to take care of them? What is our comments going to be? Well, are you going to let them back on a campus, or did you not want them on a college campus right away? We don't want them here anyway. We're certainly not taking them later. Don't you think that's part of it, though, at the core? Some of these people... Some people who criticize one and done just think these kind of kids don't shouldn't be in college. Yeah, okay, so, that's what I So think. let me just say this. You know, I think kids should be able to go out of high school to the NBA. So if they make a mistake, it's they get $15 million, $20 million. I'm good with that. But one and done, here's what it's done. There's not been a whole lot of mistakes. No. So we are the first line of evaluation for these NBA teams. And you think the NBA teams would want that. And you ready? And here we go, and we train them, we feed them, we do everything at a high level, professionally doing it, diets, training physically, all the stuff. You get the gap year to grow up and be a young man before you move on to this man's world. Tell me what's wrong with that? All right, well, it's, what's wrong with it is, you know, those kids don't want to be in school. What, who? What do you mean? You're talking Brandon Knight? Are you talking the guys, John Wall, uh, Julius Randle, Dakari Johnson, Brandon Knight, who have come back and already started? Like, well, no one will ever come back to Kentucky. You're wrong. They already have. You could say it, but it's just not true. So now tell me what has been wrong. What's wrong is Kentucky's benefiting and other people don't want. So now they say, well, you, you have such a benefit. Really? Who's won the national title the last couple of years? Villanova. Did they do it with one and done players? No. Did North Carolina do it? With, no. So why are you saying that? You're just saying stuff because we can do this and we're helping these kids not hurting the program. Would I have liked to have won three more national titles? Yeah, and I'd like to be John Wooden too. I mean, it's just this thing has worked for everybody. Would like to win more, yeah, but I'd also like to have guys drafted higher. Thanks to John Calipari for taking the time.